Just to let you know, we're now selling heirloom vegetable seeds on our website to Australian gardeners. These are all grown here at our permaculture property in Victoria, Australia. So if you'd like to support us and local sustainable growing practices without the use of industrial chemicals or monocropping, please check us out. Now onto the video. Welcome to my video. So today I'm going to show you how I made this flow-through worm bin using actually free bits and bobs that I made with this one. So what even is a flow-through worm bin and why have I now ditched my bathtub worm farms for these instead? A flow-through system has all of the worms in one deep container and the idea is that over time worm castings accumulate and compact at the bottom where they can be harvested without disturbing the worms. This is a huge pro for this kind of worm farm over the bathtub farms that I used to have. The main reason though that I ditched my bathtub worm farms was that I discovered that the enamel bathtubs I used had lead in the paint. The other benefit I've noticed since having flow through worm farms is that because they are a more compact size I can actually keep them at the back of my house and that means I'm actually feeding and watering the worms far more frequently and they're thriving so they're actually more productive despite being smaller in size. I have combined elements that I really like from other options that I saw for flow through worm farms into kind of my own design that takes the best of everything. And the two main features that I really liked from other options was to have a tray to collect the worm castings that I can just lift out. And the other thing that really was a priority for me was having the worm juice collected in a fully enclosed reservoir with a tap. And the reason is I don't want it to evaporate because to me it's super precious, really, really useful in the garden. I don't want my kids to get into it and I don't want my dog to get into it. So let's get into how to make this worm farm. So you will need two plastic bins with one lid. These are 60 litre bins. For the casting tray, I'm using a plastic garden sieve. I'm sure you could make something else that would function the same, but the whole design of this worm farm was actually inspired by the fact that I discovered that the garden sieve that I already owned almost fit perfectly in the bottom of my um, rubbish bin. It actually sits just above the very bottom, which is actually good because then that leaves a reservoir to store the worm juice. Now you'll also need some kind of tap. For my first worm farm I actually repurposed a plastic tap from a bulk water container and for a flange to keep it in place to screw on from the inside I actually repurposed part of a garden hose connector. But when it came to making this second worm farm I couldn't find the same kind of tap so I actually ended up using a water tank connector. It's a maize brand, again from Bunnings, and it comes with a flange. You're going to need a few drill bits. One that's the right size for your tap. This is a forstner bit here, but there's other hole drilling dr bits you could choose. You're going to need a thicker drill bit for creating aeration holes and some screws and whatever drill bit fits the screws. You're going to need some wood offcuts, some string, preferably something that isn't biodegradable that worms can't eat and will last a long time. And you're going to need something that can cut plastic. You'll see I have a sawzall here. That didn't work. I didn't know this at the time, so it's in the video. But don't bother. It doesn't give enough precision. I found tin snips worked really well with the first worm farm that I made, but I couldn't find them for this video, so I ended up using some old garden secateurs, which worked as well. But it probably is going to really blunt in them, so don't use anything too good. And then finally, you're going to need some bricks to create a stand to hold up your worm farm. So first step is to get your drill and bit for making the tap hole and fit your tap to the bottom of what will be the outer bin. This next step is just getting my plastic sieve to fit perfectly in the bottom of my 60 litre rubbish bin. So I actually had to cut off their little handles and a little bit around the rim just to make it fit perfectly. You may not need to do this if you're using a different kind of sieve or something else. But if you're buying the same stuff as me, this is what you're going to need to do. And I've just used my secateurs or tin snips for this. The next step is creating some string handles for the sieve that will just make it easier to pull it out from the bin when you're harvesting the worm castings. So I'm just using this nylon twine and just creating two string handles that yeah, will just prevent it from getting really, really stuck in the bin. 
So now we're working with the inner bin, so the bin that doesn't have the tap. What I'm doing here is actually cutting away most of the bottom of the inner bin, but I'm leaving behind some sort of slats that actually will support the castings in the main inner container. And this is particularly for when I'm harvesting the castings, which will involve lifting out the inner bin, putting it onto the lid of the bin, and then reaching in and getting the casting tray. But during that lifting process, I don't want all of the castings that aren't yet mature to just fall everywhere and the higher level of compaction at the bottom of the bin will provide some support but just having these kind of slats left over in um, material that isn't cut away will just provide that little bit extra support. So to do this I'm just drilling away a series of holes and then getting my secateurs and cutting away most of the bottom of the bin. I'm just leaving behind some thin strips but these are surprisingly strong and will definitely support the castings. So still working with the inner bin here, the one with now the slats in the bottom, I'm just creating a series of aeration holes around the top rim. Okay now I'm just putting it all together so that tray goes inside at the bottom of the outer bin and then the inner bin and then we'd have the lid you could stop at this point and you have a perfectly functioning flow through worm farm. And that's exactly how I made the first flow through worm farm. But it does have a flaw, which I have now addressed. The flaw was that the inner bin, when it got heavy and full of worm castings, would jam in and it would then become a two person job to lift it out. Not because it was heavy, but just because it was really stuck. The solution I found is simply just to cut two pieces of wood and just use the handles that are already there on the bin just to hold up the inner bin. I've screwed them in so I don't have to worry about them falling out and this is just a really simple solution, much easier than making like a whole frame to hold up that inner bin. So now your worm farm is ready to use. I put it on some bricks to use as a stand so I can fit a little bucket underneath to collect the worm juice. And then the next step is to put a few layers of newspaper in the bottom of the inner bin. This prevents the worms and the food scraps and that early bedding from working its way down into the casting collection tray because we don't want that. And in fact, we won't be collecting any castings from the system until it's quite mature and the bin is basically full. At this point, the newspaper will have broken down naturally on its own. The next step is choosing a bedding for your worms to live in. I personally have used sheep manure because it's what's available on my property. I'm then adding in my worms. I'm using tiger worms, which have actually just split off some from my other worm farm. Then give them some food. Then you want to put a blanket on the worms, which is just a natural piece of material that just holds moisture in and I guess provides the worms a bit more darkness and cover. I am using here a old cloth nappy, a cotton nappy. I've previously used towels. So I'm just wetting down the worm farm and right away this is going to give me some worm juice that I can use. It's just filtered through all of that manure and whatever worm castings came with the worms and it's going to be rich and a great fertilizer in the garden. You can wet down your worms every day if you like and collect the worm juice. So there you go, that's the finished worm farm. Please let me know if you make this, I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.